And I want to say one thing to your children. I know some really great ice cream places around here. <laughs> and Daddy owes you. <laughs> so talk to me afterwards. Folks, thanks. Self-awareness. Mm. Sarah, what do you think Not about there. the... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Is he your daddy? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I think he thought he was talking mm -mm. to his daughter after a shower. That's what I think. <laughs> Your daddy owes you. Let's go get some ice cream. You know his handlers are like, stop talking to the kids. Stop <laughs> so. sniffing the kids. Stop talking about ice cream with the kids. Like, stop referring to kids. And it's just that his brain can't hold on to that for long enough to actually stop doing it. Ugh. Why is Worf from Star Trek standing behind him? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to it? Can you just play that again? I'm just play concerned. And I want to say one thing to your children. Yeah, I don't understand. You're right, though, Sarah. Like, that's it's got to be at this point where they're like, please <laughs> stop talking about ice cream, candy, kids. Just stop bringing it up. <laughs> Your son's a monster. We know you didn't do well. Ashley's accused you of stuff. You're terrible at your job. We just found out that the idiot who tweets for you can't even switch accounts <laughs> properly. <laughs> What is the, why does he do this? The kids love the ice cream. Yeah, that's the only relatable people you're going to reach with ice cream. I think all he can think about is soft foods and stuff that <laughs> he's able to eat. <laughs> Apple sauces, ice creams. Pudding. Puddings. Yep. Yep. Yeah, things that he's able to digest. I call it digest. Hello again, everyone. It's Mushmouth Joe, and I'm here today to talk about the number one complaint on my channel. It's a ridiculous complaint that I get across every single website I'm on, except, of course, Rumble and Odyssey. The other day I posted this short clip on Reddit. It didn't take very long before someone started crying about it. This person believes that it's an obvious deep fake and suggested that folks should do their own research, even though they didn't do any research of their own at all. And the reason I know that is because I, too, thought it was a deep fake at first, but it isn't. I think your patience today exceeds your good judgment, but thank you. And I want to say one thing to your children. I know some really great ice cream places around here. <laughs> and Daddy owes you. Yeah. So talk to me afterwards. So there you have the same speech filmed from multiple angles, from multiple media sources. Someone sure would have had to go to a lot of trouble just to fake this short clip from a month ago. But no, let's blindly assume that everything we don't like is just another deep fake, without even a simple search on YouTube, and before publicly saying something stupid. Okay, I guess. But I'd say maybe you should follow your own advice for once. Here's another comment from way back in January. We'll just call her Mushmouth Karen. Mushmouth Karen repeatedly called me a bigot for making fun of an American president which seems a little dramatic since he's a billionaire and I'm not even a thousandaire. Mushmouth Lucky's comment is from last November and seemed harmless enough, so I was friendly to him. But then he acted like a poor schmuck who can't think for himself. He claimed that my profile pic was causing mass hysteria because it's a conspiracy theory. What a stupid son of a bitch. Over on my second channel called Mushmouth Gamer, this clip served a different purpose. This guy must be blind, deaf, and dumb, but somehow the message got through to him anyway. But then, of course, the TDS kicked in and his brain turned into scrambled eggs. The poor little fella. Anyway, I could show angry comments like these to you all day. But I didn't call you all here today just to bitch and complain. I just wanted to call these people out for being the hypocrites they truly are. Because most of these conversations have a certain type of qualifier included. They like to say things like, I don't even care about politics. Well, that's like saying, I don't care about fashion, but please don't wear that tie. Contradict yourself much? Folks, you don't have to care about politics because politics cares about you, and it will find you and manipulate you a lot more easily if you aren't aware of its presence. Besides, it's not like I'm the first person to ever make fun of the president. Just look no further than Saturday Night Live from 1976. This is Chevy Chase as Gerald Ford. And of course, Dan Aykroyd as Jimmy Carter. The late and legendary Phil Hartman played Ronald Reagan. Then for four years, Dana Carvey absolutely slayed audiences as George Bush. He also killed as Ross Perot, and Phil Hartman did the best Clinton. Hartman even played Clinton on The Simpsons. What's happening? Is it noon already? After that, things started getting really weird, to say the least. 
And now people have gotten so sensitive, they protest stand-up comedians for daring to tell jokes about our current president. Jill Biden has stood back and watched. Jill's got to step up at some point. Every first lady needs to come, uh, come correct with a campaign slogan. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Now, what are you anticipating is coming next, sweetheart? Yeah. Welcome to San Francisco. Yeah. Is it the Joe Biden joke that you're not a fan of? Just stop. Just stop? I voted for Joe Biden, but that shit didn't feel great. <laughs> Felt like I was giving grandpa the keys to the Oldsmobile <laughs> and telling him to drive to California. Wow. Are you serious? <laughs> See, yeah, no, that's oh, what happens. No, you're white listen, trying listen, to like listen. talk about, no. And you My probation officer is here now. <laughs> Have a good night, Kamala Harris. <laughs> Now's the time I need you on my side. No, no, that was the most racist joke ever. No, no. I, I, I got no. like four more no. in the chamber. No. <laughs> I'm so horny for no reason right now. The only reason I can see for this insane behavior is the fact that the jokes for Trump weren't really jokes at all. They were mostly just angry commentaries and rants about how awful they think Trump is. Which is fine, I guess, but they also did the same to those who voted for him, too. These people completely forgot what jokes are, so now they can't take one. We're not allowed to make jokes anymore. I feel the need to point out that you're the ones who elected a president who had two cranial aneurysms. I, uh, I had two cranial aneurysms. And they literally had to take the top of my head off. I mean, they take a saw and they cut your head off and, and go in to find the artery that is, one was leaking, the other that hadn't before it burst. There's this, those of you who are docs know there's a, every, every, every procession, every profession has their sick jokes. The joke among, among docs is, how do you know someone's had an aneurysm, cranial aneurysm? On the autopsy table. Only 20% of the people have it even get to the table. Well, one of the fascinating things is that the second operation, after the first one, which was a bleed, and they gave me a relatively low chance of surviving. I remember going down, the doc asking the doc, and we, you know, you're counting the ceiling tiles, and you're heading into the operating room. You, a lot of you have been there. And uh, I said, Doc, what, what are my chances? I had two great neurosurgeons. And I'll never forget, I will not mention his name, he's one of the leading neurosurgeons in the, in the in the world. Um, he said, uh, Senator, for mortality or morbidity? And I'm thinking, <laughs> no, I swear to God. I'm thinking, oh, gee, you know, like, well, I said, let me put it this way. It was a long road to the operating room. I said, sister, absolutely true story. I said, what are my chances of getting off this table and being completely normal? He said, well, your chances of living are a lot better. <laughs> and I said, okay, what are they? He said, well, they're, they're, they're in the 35 to 50% range. And I thought, well, seriously, I was a born optimist. I said, well, hell, that means 35 out of 100, 50 out of 100 make it. I, was going, I might as well be the one. I said, well, what's the most likely thing that will happen if I, uh, if, if I live? But what... He said, well, the side of the brain that the first, arter the first aneurysm is on controls your ability to speak. <laughs> and I thought, why in the hell didn't they tell me this before the 88 campaign? Uh, it could have saved us all a lot of trouble. You know what I mean? Wow, this guy's scoring some pretty good laughs off this crowd by making jokes about your president. That means he's an insurrectionist and needs to be locked up immediately. Seriously, you guys sure can dish it out, but you can't take it at all. How in the world do you expect us not to make jokes and laugh when you've given us the lowest hanging fruit in history? Just take a look at this guy. And Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair c come back up again. Everywhere I've been hearing all around the country, you're trying your best, 
but it never feels like enough. Mr. President, what did you want? Yeah. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. If we elect two more senators, we keep the House and Democrats, we're going to get a lot of unfinished business. We're going to get done. So let me say it again. Thank you, uh, Terry, and thank you, uh, Dr. Pepper, and thank you, Chancellor, or Dr. Paper. I have not made that formal decision, but it's my intention, my intention to run again. And we have time to make that decision. Uh, Dr. Biden is for it. Mr. President. Oh, Dr. Biden thinks that uh, my wife thinks that. uh, That I uh, that, that we're that we're doing something very important. So the best way to get something done, if you if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to. Anyway, I'm we're going to get a lot done down here. Yes, sir. Down the ramp. And we have people lined up on the left over here, Uh, some union leaders and workers. Hey, guys and ladies. Your mark is going to be the blue one to the left. How y'all doing? You've got a blue mark, and that's okay. I got, I'll stay in my blue mark, and then I'm going to say load each one of you. Yes, sir. I'm going to, I'll, I'll help you get started. They make a very good point. Here's the deal. Okay. Um, hang on. Uh, sorry. Oh. No, think about it. What in the hell heck are we talking about here? Oops, stepping on a, there's a, it's black. Anyway, my name's Joe Biden. I'm Jill Biden's husband. (laughs) Thank you, Eva, for that introduction, and congratulations on your, I accept your debut as a director, adding another accomplishment to an already incredible, incredible career. We've known each other a long time. She was 17, I was 40. But the Taoiseach knows a lot about it. His mom uh, lived in uh, in Long Island for 10 years or so. Uh, God rest her soul. And uh, um, although she's wait, your mom's still your mom's still alive. Is your dad passed? God bless her soul. I got to get this straight. Somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion 300 million billion dollars. Soon NATO will be the 32nd freestanding, have free, 30 free, 32 freestanding <laughs> members standing together to defend our people and our territory. Thank you, thank you, thank you. you Gotta say hi to me. We go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. Look, tomorrow's Superstar Tuesday, and I want to thank you all. I tell you what, I'm rushing ahead, aren't I? I would eliminate the capital gains tax. That in, I, would, I would raise the capital gains tax. We choose unity over division. We choose science over fiction. We choose truth over facts. I commuted every single solitary day to Wilmington, Delaware, over 500 miles a day, Uh, excuse me, uh, 250 miles a day. There's a lot of really talented people we have out there. Kamala Harris, you got Cory Booker, you got got the, you know, the former mayor of Massachusetts. You got a lot of talented people. You know, the rapidly rising uh, um, uh, in with, uh, with, uh, I don't know. Uh, I can hardly wait to debate him on stage. I want, him, I want people to see me standing next to him and him standing next to me. <laughs> we'll see who's sleepy. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, thank you. Thanks for your time. Please come back in less than 13 years, sir. 
All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, it's Chris, I but mean, anyway. Chris. I just did Chris. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I just did Chuck. I tell you what, man, these are back to back. Anyway. Why doesn't he just act like a president? That's a stupid way to say you it. You know, guess, Donald Trump really was asked on. He... Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I probably best I don't. I just, I just can't figure the guy. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like watching a yo-yo. I shouldn't have said it that way. It's like watching... It feels that way. <laughs> I want to ask... It, I want <laughs> And I tell you what, I'm so darn proud. And those poor people who have lost, you know, anyway. Because we cannot get re-elect, we cannot win this re-election. Excuse me, we can only re-elect Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm Donald Trump, and I approve this message. What are we doing? What are we doing? Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night, the, the, the phone. Make sure the kids hear words. A kid coming from a very poor school, or a very poor background, will hear four million words fewer spoken by the time they get there. By the way, this is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this is not. Oh, you switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. They switched on me. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Sounds corny. Not a joke. Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. And look, nobody likes having celebrated international meetings if you don't know what you want at the meeting, if you don't have a game plan. He may have a game plan. He just hasn't shared it with me. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go to bed. Thanks for watching.